Greetings, Internet. Thank you for joining me for another tarot interviews where we reverse engineer the tarot and use the cards to ask questions. So today's guests, we have Julia Rios, Nadia Bulkin, Joe Koch, and Krista Carmen, who are all the minds, contributors, creators behind the Kickstarter for Why Didn't You Just Leave, which is a collection of haunted house stories addressing that question that we often ask in horror movies and situations. It's like, okay, well, why didn't the characters just, you know, book it, you know, get the lay of the land and take off. So the stories are meant to address that. And they've agreed to come on. Also, I'll be doing as part of one of the perks for the Kickstarter, I am doing readings for that. So definitely go check it out. The link, of course, is in the banner. If any of the mods are here, feel free to throw those links in the chat as well. Um, and hello and welcome, everyone. So Hi. thank you so much. Um, would everyone like to kind of go around and introduce themselves a little bit, talk about the work and the Kickstarter? Sure. I think Nadia should start because okay. it was all Nadia's idea that started this. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, yep. And, and there's my website down there. Um, so I am a horror writer based in Washington, D.C. Um, I mainly write ghost and demon stories, I would say, <laughs> my, my flavor of horror. Um, and I also really love horror movies, um, and I review them on Twitter and Instagram. And, um, so I watch a lot of them and I have a pretty high tolerance for shenanigans, um, that are maybe counterintuitive in horror movies. Um, so I'm not the one who actually asks this question. I just know that other people do. So I was watching a horror movie, um, and knowing that, you know, I just pulled up the reviews and I knew that they were all going to say, why didn't these characters just leave? And I just thought, you know, we should, um, we should re really make an anthology about this. And Julia happened to actually see this comment on a now defunct social media website called Hive. And she happened to reach out to me and they have to reach out to me and said you know i would love to do this and so i said yolo let's do it um and we decided to invite some of our favorite writers who fortunately all said yes um and two of them are here with us today yay <laughs> who would like to talk about themselves next uh i'll go next as the other co-editor uh, I'm Julia Rios. I am a writer, editor, podcaster, and narrator. And when Nadia said this online, I was like, oh, this is exactly my idea of a good time. So I'm very excited to be editing this anthology with Nadia. Uh, for the Kickstarter, we have a lot of really cool rewards, including some stickers that I designed, which I'm going to try to hold up here. This one is a bowl of cereal that says Ghosty O's, and then there's a ghost coming out of it. And then there's also this little headstone, which says, why didn't you just leave? And then there's this cute little ghost that says, boo. And so those are all available as rewards for the Kickstarter as well. If you want them, I made them out of stock art. So I didn't draw the things, but I put the elements together. And we have lots of other cool things, including Regina's generous offer of tarot readings at a discount over her current rate, which is very exciting. You're making me blush. <laughs> so Joe or Carmen, would you like to go next? I can go or ahead Carmen. and go. Okay. Um, so I, I have a friend named Carmen, so I go to Carmen before I go to Krista. <laughs> so. No worries, it happens all the time, it's all good. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Yeah. Joe Koch, um, and I I don't actually write a lot of ghost stories or haunted house stories, so it was very exciting to be invited by Nadia and Julia, um, who I very much admire their writing, so I'm still kind of coping with believing I'm in the project. Um, so yeah, I was really excited to write a haunted house story and do um, come at it from like a really psychological point of view and not a very traditional point of view at all. 
Um, and that's kind of more what I write. I, I'm the author of a novella called The Wingspan of Severed Hands, um, a novelette called The Cuvée that was a nominee for a Shirley Jackson Award back in a couple of years ago. And I have a collection out called Convulsive. I have another collection that hasn't been announced yet, but it'll be coming out early in 2024, if all goes well. Um, so that's me. I'm just really excited to be part of the project. Excellent. Um, and Krista? I am Krista Carmen. Um, I am I'm a Rhode Island-based horror writer, and I say that because um, mostly these days, everything I write is set in Rhode Island. Uh, so I have my um, debut gothic horror thriller novel coming out this December called The Daughters of Block Island. Can uh, can everybody hear? No, it sounds cutting out for Krista. Oh no. Let me move around a bit. Does this help at all? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, so I apologize. So I was saying that I have a novel coming out this December. It is a meta gothic novel, um, heavily influenced by the Scream franchise. In the like, the characters know that they're in a gothic novel. Um, I have, I'm trying to think if I write a lot of like haunted house and ghost stories. My most recent publication is, it just came out in Vasterian and it is also a haunted house story. But in this story, it is that somebody, it was inspired by the um, epitaph at the front of Carmen Maria Machado's collection, Her Body and Other Parties. And I'm probably gonna butcher it right now just off the top of my head, but it's the one that goes, my body is a haunted house. There are no doors, but there are a hundred windows and there are knives. So my latest publication is a story, a haunted house story where someone's body is the haunted house. Um, and yeah, my story for this anthology is for why didn't you just leave um, is, I actually don't think of it as a haunted house story, even though it very much is, but it, for me, it was more about the characters and the question that Julia and Nadia posed of why wouldn't they just leave? And the setting could probably be pretty interchangeable for, for my story. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you for that. I'm so excited for this project. It just looks really good. So I guess we're going to get started with the interview portion of our hang out here. So let's in big in everybody. And I'm going to draw the first, the first card. I am using the Santa Muerta deck because the skeletons, I was like, this art for a horror panel. Is right. So our first question is going to be based on the Harriet card. Oh, I managed to do it without ring light reflection. I'm very pleased with myself right now. So when it comes to building momentum as you're writing writing something or uh, beginning in the beginning of stages of the project, how how do you navigate that or do that, keep yourself pushing forward with either both writing or career? Um, yeah, and who would like to take that one first? Anyone? The <laughs> Bueller? I mean, I feel like the cop out answer is deadline. <laughs> I know the chariot is going to fall into a ring of fire if I if I don't maintain momentum. So it's 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 it's, uh, it's fear fear based fear based is how is how I maintain momentum. Uh, but I think also just like trying to find ways to re-excite myself. So actually I keep like a, um, a podcast list, of, well not a podcast list, sorry, a, a song list of like songs that reflect my current um, work. And they're hopefully songs that are, that remind me of how much I love the work. 
And so if I'm ever feeling kind of dejected about it or like, meh, this is boring or something like that, I re-listen to that um, and try to kind of like re-energize myself to hopefully get it over the finish line. So that's my, my answer. Excellent. Who would like to take it on next? I, um, I would like to nominate <laughs> Krista because uh, because here's the thing about Krista. Krista is a, a busy, busy woman. Like she has a full-time job. She has a small child. She has a lot of family obligations. And yet she is constantly writing. So I don't know how you stay in the groove for that, Krista. And I'd love to hear it. Um, I mean, like stand again, because I feel like my internet connection is better when I'm moving a little bit. Uh, so the, I guess the cop out answer to that would be um, that I'm a person in recovery for substance abuse and writing is very much my addiction. So like, I just, I just do it because I don't, it's like an impulse. Like I'm like, I just have to write. Um, and I get a lot, I think I get a lot of story ideas. So the com like, I'm never out of ideas just by virtue of the way my brain works. And I watch a ton of horror movies like Nadia does. And um, I'm always reading. I, I, I do read outside the genre a fair amount, but I read a lot of horror. So I always come up with ideas and then I have this impulse to write. So they just, they just come out that way. Um, and as far as Regina, your question about like, how do you push the project through to the end? I think over the last like 10 years of writing, I've gotten really good at knowing, like if an idea to me doesn't seem viable and I don't have the picture of how I wanna get all the way to the end right off the rip, I usually don't even go anywhere with the idea. Um, like if it's just like this half formed thing that's like interesting, but I don't see what the story is, I just jot it down in a little notebook and like maybe I'll use it someday, but I don't, I don't and for better or worse, I guess, because maybe different stuff would come out of me if I did sit and like tease something out. But I don't usually sit down and start writing the actual words unless I see the story through all the way to the end. Show. Sure. Um, yeah, I think that for me, it's like, uh, writing a story is like figuring out a mystery. And so what keeps me going is I want to find out what's going to happen. I don't, I don't really sit down and write a, an outline with a lot of details when I do a story, like it's a process of discovery. Like to me, that's exciting. So that's, that's why I write that way. Um, sometimes I will have like specific emotional things like, uh, notes, if you want to call it that, to hit, or that I want to like really explore and dig into. So, you know, sometimes there's not an outline, but there's like emotional complexes that I want to get to or end up with um, or different points in the story. So, yeah, I think for me, it's just the mystery of figuring the thing out. And Julia, do you have an answer? Yeah, I do have an answer. I think so. What speaks to me the most about this card draw in particular is the being pulled in different directions aspect of it. If you don't watch out, that chariot is going to like whoosh right in half. And I think for me, it's a question of every day trying to refocus myself and decide what I'm going to do that day, where I'm going to spend my energy. And so any big project just ends up being broken down into tiny pieces that I can do each single day and make sure that that day the chariot doesn't go off the rails or off the road or explode into a million pieces. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you everyone for those answers. I love all the different takes. Okay, so this is interesting. In this particular deck, I think of this as the writer's card because it's the Page of Wands and the Page of Wands is holding a scroll. Although there is another one with an actual like desk and stuff, but with the Page of Wands. So how do you handle a lot? One of the, one of the meanings or the one of the traditional meanings with the Page of Wands has to do with gossip, right? So when... 
like let's say industry gossip or uh, writerly gossip, and I'm not asking for tea here, but when it lands in your ears, how do you approach either taking that in or addressing it if it needs to be addressed? Those kinds of things. And I think every industry has its like uh, little thing with that. So I'm just curious. I mean, I'll start with this one. I feel like the um, the thing that I see the most with industry gossip is that on social media, which I think most of us are on as writers, there's constantly some kind of blow up happening usually. And the main thing for me is to not get too swept up in talking about those things. Um, sort of keep my eyes on my own page because if you do, I, for me personally, I can, I would just get lost in it and I would never get any work done. Um, and it's entirely possible to do that because there is a constant stream of it. There's always a new scandal somehow. So for me, it's like a clear, I have to, I have to make sure I ration my time and balance it and think really carefully, like, what am I going to engage with? What am I going to respond to? And usually the answer is, not the latest thing that people are talking about. Yeah, I will admit that I probably like to know these things a bit more than I perhaps should. And um, I, I try never to engage in it, but I try to find out what, because it's usually subtext, right? It's usually like just a comment that someone makes and you're like, I don't know what the heck this is in reference to. But my fear, I think since having been in horror for like, you know, I don't know, like 10 years, 15 years or so, is that sometimes it's somebody that you've worked with. Sometimes it's somebody that, you know, it's like there's some publisher issue. And especially with indie press where we're all doing it kind of for the love. But that means that also it's really important that we like keep each other safe and protected, but also help hold each other accountable. So it's this really delicate dance of like, okay, do I need to know about this because someone else is being screwed over in a way and there needs to be some kind of like expression of support? Do I need to kind of question a relationship that I have? Um, thankfully, I haven't had to do that, but I know friends that have, and it's heartbreaking when it happens um, because one thing you learn is that you people can be very different to you versus to someone else. Um, so I do think that it's kind of kind of within the responsibility of the community to kind of try to stay aware so that you're not the missing stare. Um, I think the phrase is. Um, but like Julia said, definitely try not to be like the one speaking too much of it because I, you know, don't want to get involved too deeply. Oh, I think that's wise. So Krista, yeah. Joe? Yeah, it kind of like knowing a little bit about what's going on, like just a very little bit of gossip keeps you from working with the wrong people or supporting um, folks that you wouldn't want to ethically support. But it's also just a huge distraction from actually writing and a you do see a lot of people get very caught up in that. Um, so I try to just tread very lightly, you know, just tread the surface of the water with that kind of thing. You know, have some concept of, is there an issue? Does it even affect me? And then just leave it behind because getting really, really involved in that, people are writing like essays on Twitter, basically, like 20, 20 post threads, you could put all that effort into writing your story or your novel. Yeah, I don't think I could really say anything that's more poignant and true than that. Um, knowing, you know, knowing, I think there's a difference. I think there's just a complete difference too in like knowing what's going on, the important things and, and like engaging in gossip. Um, and I guess I'll just like point back to what Julia said a, a few minutes ago about how I, I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> I have a day job that's like a, a, I work at Pfizer in a pharmaceutical role and I just, you know, between family and 
wanting to get the writing done. I just don't have time to, to it, it can be really time consuming. I'm also, I'm often, if I do go on and just see like a, a snapshot of like some 20 thread thing, I'm just like, oh my God, that'll take me half an hour to read, let alone how long it took them to write it. Um, but yeah, I think if you are a part of the community, you're inevitably going to have to like wait around and, and look at some stuff just to see what's going on so that you don't, you know, work with or just get stuck in a situation where you don't have all the info that you would like to have. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like find the actual information, but leave it alone kind of thing. Yeah, or find the information and like then use that to make sure that you're not accidentally boosting someone who is like a known harasser or something like that. Um, I think those are really important things to keep in mind. But I think that there are also different kinds of industry gossip that we can get. So I think a lot of times we get this person has done something bad. Everybody should know it. And that's sort of like a PSA. So that's when it's good to know. And you can kind of try to avoid working with that person or boosting that person. Um, but then there are other kinds of industry gossip where it's, you know, a question of whether or not it's okay for someone to have used details from someone else's life. There was this whole big saga about a story called Cat Person that was a literary story a couple of years ago. And um, the, the writer of the story had used details from another real person's life without like really asking for permission. Um, and this became a huge dialogue on the internet. And I mean, when I say huge, I talk to other writers that I'm in writing groups with and they lost like an entire week of work to just talking on Twitter about whether it was okay or not and who wow. was in the wrong. And that's the kind of thing where I'm just like, I, I don't have time for that. Just d back away. Yeah. Yeah, there's a difference I, between PSAs and like discourse. Discourse is the trap. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I, uh, with Twitter, I always feel like Twitter is like, let's go stare at this app and make myself mad for like on purpose for no reason. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I just want to add, <laughs> sorry, I just want to add like, it's also doing anything creative. You have to manage your energy and you have only so much energy and bandwidth. So, if you decide to put that into Twitter because that's what you want to do for a day, that's fine. Go for it. But know that's what you're doing. Like you have to manage and make choices about where your energy goes. And if you want to waste it, have fun. Okay, fine. But, you know, that there's the consequence to that. Right. And um, if you if you let too much of your energy get burned out of you, the consequence could be that an angry, vengeful spirit takes up residence in your body. So just kind of pulling <laughs> it back to the ghost story stuff. <laughs> Gossipy ghosts. I don't know. I want to do something with that, but like, I don't know what it would be. <laughs> All right. So next card we have. We have got the Queen of Cups. Interesting. Queen of Cups, water sign energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. I'm like doing the pattern as if I'm reading right now. But with the Queen of Cups, one of her things is about having a deep well of imagination, being very contemplative. So what do you do to feed the well of imagination? I'll, I'll go first because my answer is going to be pretty quick. If I, I don't know what it is about just like walking my dog, but if I go and take my dog for a walk, I come back with like pages of text messages to myself of like ideas that I, I just, something about like walking through nature, like listening to the birds or, you know, it doesn't matter what season, like trudging through snow, just like the mindless monotony, my brain just goes and goes. So if there, if there's like, um, a call, like a submission call that I want to write for, or like an, an anthology invitation, and I'm not coming up with something immediately. I'm like, I'm just going to go for a walk and not bring my headphones so that I can be tempted by a podcast or an audiobook. And then I come back and usually I have something. Cool. 
Who's next? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna also say going for a walk. I don't have a dog, but you know, just like taking my body for a walk. Um, you can borrow my dog. I'll ship her to you. <laughs> <laughs> She's That'd a puppy. Be so I'm fun. A cat sits sometimes and it's like the best thing. Hang out with an animal. Yeah, but like literally contemplation, which is what you said, Regina, the card symbolizes. Um, that's, I mean, that's whatever makes you um, stop chattering and blathering around or filling your head with nonsense and, you know, just overwhelming, insubstantial input. So definitely walks, hikes, bike riding, um, little quiet time. I don't know. I mean, I do like to to read or, you know, watch uh, films that are provocative in some way to kind of get me going too. Um, like I have a particular love of traumatic cinema. Like if you say this is the movie you can't stand to finish, I'm like, oh, I want to see that. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'll echo that. I also use media a lot. Uh, sometimes if it's like a very concentrated call that I'm trying to fill, it will be something where it's like the mood or ambiance is like seems to match kind of. But honestly, a lot of times if I'm just like, I need to come up with something, it'll be a totally different genre, a totally different subject, but something that I am interested in to hopefully get my brain to lock on to something. Like, what does this make me think of? Like, usually I can then find something that at least is a kernel that I'm like attached to. Um, and the other thing that I use honestly is dreams. I've gotten a lot of stories out of dreams and I have a dream journal that my best friend gave me for the purposes of writing these down because I really do, like I, they're so complicated and often do not involve me at all. Um, so yeah, that, that's something that I do. Awesome. I think it's really fun that this card came up today because today, I don't know if any of you follow astrology, but today is the new moon in Cancer. Um, so it's a very emotional day and it's like a good day to reset all of your sort of inner work and energy. Um, also, some people say it's a good sex magic day. <laughs> so if, if you're into that, I guess, <laughs> go to town. Um, but I think like from the creative perspective, this sort of theme of resetting, it's very in keeping with this Queen of Cups card. Um, and I think for me, when I, when I think about when I'm stuck and what I do to sort of refill that, I think for me, stepping away. And I think that's actually what all of you said, just in different ways. But for me, it's not necessarily any specific activity. It's just making a conscious choice that this project is not, it's, it's in a blocked place. So I need to just kind of turn my attention away for a little bit. And when I do that, I do that with intent. And I tell myself, hey, we need to figure out what the answer is to get unstuck here. We need to refill. So let's go do something else and like work on that in the background. And that whatever you're doing in the background, whether that's watching a movie or reading a book or doing the dishes or taking a shower or washing or walking your dog or washing your dog, I guess, any, any of those things can sort of give you the chance to sort of breathe and relax into letting your subconscious mind do that work that you need to sort of unlock your creativity for me anyway. Very cool. You mentioned the new moon in Cancer, and I just remembered we started with the chariot card, which is the card for Cancer for the, of the major arcana. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of wild. Nice little synchronicity there. So I got to pull the next card. Oh, ooh, we got a very red card, which is also excellent for horror since all the blood. Um, so we have the Ace of Wands. Again, another card about creativity and action. So do you ever get like that creative impulse where you're just like, I have to just do this all right now, right now, and have this like, you know, the all nader or like the crazy like impulse to just, um, you know, again, the all nighter or like take a whole week and only focus on one thing because it just has this sense or feeling of urgency with it. 
I'll go ahead and answer first because I I feel like that's just how I write with whatever I'm doing. Like, I, I and if I'm not working on something, if I'm between projects, I'm kind of looking for the thing that's going to be that obsessive that I will have to like, like I have to do it. It's not like a question of making time. Yeah, I agree with that completely. I'm very much like, I mean, I have two stories that I'm supposed to be writing for other anthologies like due this summer. And I have all these ideas for, I've been writing like spooky horror children's picture book manuscripts and like kind of practicing my little hand at that. Um, and I spent like, like hours and hours and like stayed up half the night. Like but if something is a project that I'm like in and I'm just, yeah, I'll stay up and do it or, you know, be thinking about it constantly. Like I have to just stay completely immersed in it. Um, and that's also a sign of like, if I'm not to like, if I'm not totally feeling something, if I'm not jumping to get at the keyboard every day to finish it, I have to kind of step back and be like, what's something's not working here. So like, what, what do I need to, what do I need to do to get to that place where I'm like, frantic to get the project done in, in a good way, not like wanting to get it off my plate, but like wanting to be obsessive about it. I think for me, I tend to work in uh, sort of like rest periods and then big sprints where I get things done. So that's just like Joe said, that's just kind of how I work, I think, in general. So I used to be this way. And sometimes I still wish I was, um, but I'm not anymore. And I think to be a little bit meta slash vulnerable, like as I've basically prioritized my mental health, this has gone down for me. And I think, I don't know if it's a side effect of the SSRIs or my therapy or what, but I just don't, I often don't get to that point anymore. And there will be like a couple times where I do and then I'm like nearly sort of like manic. Um, but usually it just kind of stays at this like 75% max. And I don't know if that's like my brain being like protecting myself because when I was like that, it was like, it was like to the point that I couldn't do anything else in my life. And maybe that's, it's like, you know, you're in the season of balance right now or something like that. Um, and maybe it'll change again at some point, but, um, but right now that actually doesn't happen for me anymore. Interesting. I do think, I th yeah, I think, I think that there's been like different periods of my life, different aspects of creativity, not anything specific where I've been like, I have to stay up all day for like, you know, a couple of days in a row to get something done that obsessive, like can't. Um, or it's to stay up all day because I have this impulse that I have to see through, but I also have a million other obligations. Um, college, my college years just felt like that. So I, like, I know what you're talking about. And then when it normalizes, there's an interesting contrast, right? So it can almost feel like, oh, why don't I have any energy when really what's happening is you're kind of coming to center and, and getting a little bit like normal with and when I see normal, I mean, whatever your baseline is. Yes. Yes. That's yes. exactly how I, yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I think I just for me, I, it's a little bit um, of the case where I've always dealt with various things like chronic migraines. Um, and I know that there are going to be days that I just lose where I can't do anything. And on those days, it's really important to forgive myself and allow myself to rest and to tell myself that this is the best thing I can be doing. I'm not going to get any work done. And that's okay, because I need to rest so that the next time I can do work, I can do it. But then the flip side of that is that for me, a lot of times, if I actually do have a day where I'm feeling good, it's like I have a fire under me to get a bunch of things done. And I really actually enjoy that kind of rhythm. It just means that I, I have come to a place of balance where I do think prioritizing my health and prioritizing both mental and physical health is really important. But for me, that might mean not working normal hours for someone else 
but taking like large rest chunks and then large work chunks. That makes a lot of sense to me. All right, next card. King of Wands. It's all about the action. All right. So we did, we, we were just talking a lot about, um, about mental health and creativity and the balance. And the King of Wands is a card of action. He's like the character in the court cards who's like, okay, so here's the idea. I'm ready to make the plan. And then I'm going to put this plan into action very quickly. Um, also often as a, as a person, they're described as fit, meaning like physically healthy, um, as opposed to like the superficial stuff. So what do we do? What does everyone do to take care of we? Um, I don't know why I keep using the royal we and everything, but I do it all the time. Sorry. So what does everyone do when to take care of their physical health, especially when you're deep in a project and like, you know, when people describe putting ass and seat as part of it and thinking of that as like torture because of sitting still, when all you want to do is put that ass in the seat and do the project, but you know, you've got to move around to stay in, to even to keep your flow going. Like, so how do you navigate that? I guess, um, I mentioned my pain in the ass dog earlier when Joe was talking, like, I guess in a way it's good that she's a pain in the ass because, um, I cannot get away with not taking her for a pretty significant walk. Uh, and I don't probably like exercise and work out as much as somebody my age should. So a daily dog walk seems pretty sufficient to me. And it's like, it's something that time wise I can fit into my schedule. Anytime I start thinking like I bought a Peloton a few years ago, it's a really close hanger in my room. Um, so it seems like that's like all I have time to do. And it works out well because I get stuff done. You know, it's like kills a lot of birds with one stone. I talked about the idea generation before and um, yeah. So what I do. Who's next? Um, I do work out in the morning and it's ma ma mainly because I have a job that demands that I'm immediately on call and talking to people. I'm like basically like people's performance manager. <laughs> um, and so like you need energy for that. And I am not a morning person. So I need something that's going to like infuse adrenaline like right away. Um, so I do have that. Um, I also have like a standing desk, you know, to try to encourage me to like get up, you know, and like stand because I do, I will definitely be in like the same position, you know, and like my roommate will come home and be like, have you moved? You know, and I'm like, well, no, but I got a page down, you know? <laughs> um, so, I mean, I have done, I mean, I've gone to physical therapy for like, you know, and it's like, your posture is really bad, you know? So like, I, I sort of have to actively, I'm very sensitive to my pain though now. So I'm like, oh, nope, that's a bad position. Um, so yeah, I, I do sort of like have a concerted effort to like keep moving throughout the writing process or remind myself to. Cool. Uh, before we uh, take the next two answers, Joe and Julia, um, I did want to mention that I know that Krista has to leave a little bit early. So I just um, want to make sure that everyone sees Krista and knows that Krista is fabulous and has amazing things coming out and out already in the world. And where's that banner? Let me find the banner. We're going to pop that on screen so you can find more about Krista and Krista's work. Just, you know, in case she has to duck out before, uh, before, you know, the next round of questions. Thank you. Regina. Thank you. I'll try and to I, see one more question and then I'll, I'll um, okay. appear, but I want to let Julia. Awesome. Please. And then of course, like if, uh, if I don't get a chance to say it later, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me and for, uh, for thank you for having all of us. All right, Joe, Julia, who would like to take the next answer for that last one? I, I want to actually derail your question and direct okay. it towards the, um, the stories rather than me. Like, I, okay. I think that would be more interesting to know like how that, that it was at the King of Wands, the card? Yes. 
which I feel like I don't know much about that, but in my story called The Head Harvest, it's very much about um, a, an ambiguous or difficult domestic kind of mood or situation. And the, the father figure in it is extremely ambiguous. And even in uh, Nadia, actually, we had a little convert, brief email conversation like, you know, about what is really happening and, you know, figuring out what was right for the world of the story. I guess I don't really have a good answer or question. I'm just rambling, but that those are my thoughts. Okay. I'm wondering how we could do this. I have an idea, but Julia still hasn't answered. Oh, well, uh, quickly, I'll just say I try to stand up every hour if I can. Um, I also try to make it easy for me to do quick things that will get my, my circulation going. I have a rebounder trampoline in my living room. So like a lot of times in the middle of something, when I get up to stretch, I'll just do a, like a bounce for a minute and that just kind of gets the circulation going. Cause that's the biggest problem with sitting. Um, so those are the things that I do to try to not suffer too much while sitting down all day. Very cool. I love the idea of a trampoline. I'm on a, I'm in a second floor apartment. So like, ah, oh, I could never get away with this. <laughs> All right. So I think we're going to flip it around because Joe's idea of applying themes to the stories, what I think I'm going to do now, we're going to change it up a little. Um, and of course everyone can bow out if they want to, but there's like, a, um, I'm going to say the theme of the card and then you can tell me where it shows up in the stories Ch a challenge to everyone all right so interesting so we have uh, the six of pentacles here so and then the santa muerta deck it's a little bit different um in this deck the six of pentacles is generally about kindness and generosity but a lot of times when someone does favors there's an unspoken contract or expectation attached to those favors. So does that theme show up anywhere in the stories? I feel like Krista really needs to go next and like, tell us a little bit about your story because this is perfect. Yeah. Um, so my story, uh, just very briefly, when I saw what the theme of this anthology was going to be, that it was, you know, why didn't you just leave? I put myself in my potential main character's shoes and I was thinking like, why wouldn't I leave a haunted house? Like what reasons would I have for not leaving? Um, you know, a re what would be my best reason for not leaving? Let's put it that way. And uh, I, I do have a, a young daughter. She's three. Uh, this past year was the first time that she was like, in school and getting all these colds. And it was the first time that I'd really had that thought of like, oh, I wish I could take this thing from this person and just take it on myself, like take your pain, your sickness. Um, so what came to mind was like, the only way I'd like willingly stay into a haunt in a haunting is if I was like taking it on for my child. Uh, so the theme of generosity plays into my story quite nicely because the way it ended up coming out and this was kind of a surprise to me even when i was writing it was um not only was the mother character like taking on the haunting but she'd ask, actually become quite like gleeful almost manic in doing so like she was so dead set on sticking with this like perfect mother figure that she'd become by taking on all of these things for her daughter potentially to her daughter's detriment right like in when we take something on for somebody, if we take a sickness from them, they're not gonna build up their immune system. If we take some traumatic experience from them, like, and the, this, these are like controversial statements potentially, right? I'm not making it a black and white thing, but like one could argue that if you take on a traumatic experience for somebody, like maybe they needed that traumatic experience to grow, um, but she doesn't care. She sees it as black and white, like she's taking this haunting for her daughter and because that's what a good mother would do. Wow. I mean, Any volunteer? Um, there are two stories that come to mind in the anthology that are hardcore about this issue of contracts and um, deals that are made, um, essentially. Um, 
So the two that I'm thinking of are Eden Royce's um, Spirit Bed, which is kind of uh, one of those, well, okay, I won't say too much because I literally will give it away if I say, um, but there's a contract, there's contracts involved. <laughs> and there's, um, there's uh, negotiations that people may or may not be entirely w aware of involved. Um, and then Susan Palumbo's Good Company, which is a knowing contract entered into by a woman who is trying to basically maintain her visa status so that she can bring her family over. But that means that she has to be in this terrible haunted situation. So I think that one of the themes that we're getting in Why Didn't You Just Leave is like, what are the things that are more important to you than a terrifying situation? And um, and contracts are a great way to hold people to those to those um, prioritization lists, I will say. Yeah, I'll definitely agree with that. I'll add that what we can say about Eden's story without spoiling it is it's about two sisters and one goes to rescue the other but maybe things aren't exactly as she thinks they are at first. Ooh. Very cool. Oh, okay, we're live still. I thought everybody was frozen for a second or I'm frozen, but. Let's see. Joe, do you have anything to add? Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, nothing really comes to mind with that card. Yeah. I, I, okay. I, I'd have to think about it for like another hour. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> well, we are at almost, we're like 13 minutes to the hour. So I did want to take some time toward the close to like really talk again about those Kickstarter project and um, how are you guys doing? Like, where's, where is the Kickstarter at in terms of like funding and goals and stretch goals and, and perks and all the things Let's start first. <laughs> okay. I can, I can start with that. Uh, we're currently sitting at $6,765. It's about 55% of our funding goal. Um, we have several good rewards left. Lots of lots of exciting things. Like, of course, you can get the ebook and you can get the paperback version. Those are a given. Uh, I mentioned the stickers that I made earlier. Those are available. Uh, Regina has some tarot readings at currently. So there, there were five of those as an individual reward level and five in the add-ons. For people who had already backed but wanted to add one on. Uh, if you choose the individual reward level, you have the choice to add on anything else from the Kickstarter. So if you also want the book, you can grab that as the individual reward and then also add the book on. Um, we are currently, I think, two or three people have taken the reward level. I think two people. So there are three of the reward levels left and three people have taken the add-on. So there are two of those left. So there are five total but if you want a 15 minute live reading with Regina at a discount from her normal rate, this is your chance. <laughs> uh, you still have a few of them. Uh, we also have one of the things that, this isn't actually a specific reward, but it's a thing that we just announced to our reading audience when we read, Nadia and I read excerpts at ReaderCon this weekend. And this is gonna be a benefit for everyone. We're actually gonna announce it formally tomorrow but you're going to get to hear about it early if you're watching live. And that is that actually as a ghost party favor for everyone who has come to our little ghost party, you're going to get a bonus ebook, which contains ghost stories from me and Nadia. And that's going to arrive like basically as soon as the campaign ends, as soon as Kickstarter puts those funds into the bank account, that reward will go out because these stories already exist and it's just a fun bonus. So you'll get that in all the ebook formats and anyone who backs the project at any level will get this. So bonus ghost stories. Yay. So I was looking at the haunted haunted event 
thing. And I was like, that just looks awesome. Can you talk about that? Or did people take it already? I was just going to say, I do unfortunately have to step away. My The tarot cards over here in Rhode Island have spoken. I'm being pulled away. Um, but everyone needs to fund this project because it is so amazing. And I do not need to spend like several hundred dollars myself getting like spooky things with Julia and Nadia and, and stories from them. So uh, it's such an awesome project. The contributors are amazing. I'm like shocked to be in such phenomenal company and Nadia and Julia are amazing editors. Um, and thank you so much for this uh, very cool interview. I really appreciate it. But I'll let these awesome individuals talk more about the Kickstarter and thank you again. Thank you for joining. Have a good Thanks, day. Thank Bye, Krista. Thank you. Bye. Uh, so I heard you asking about the haunted things. OK, these we have we have a really exciting one. Uh, this is the Manifest Your Own Digital Haunting Reward Level, and that is where we have asked a paranormal expert, um, she is a paranormal investigator and also a medium, Catherine Bergfeld, to do a Zoom webinar with just a few of us. So I, I think that's a limited quantity reward. I think there are 10 of those, or possibly, possibly it's eight in the rewards and eight in the add-ons, so a total of 16 people could get them. Anyway, these, if you choose this, you get to be part of a small group Zoom where you will be able to ask any question you want about paranormal investigation or mediumship to someone who's actually an expert in the field, but she does as her main job. And she also has told us that she's going to be willing to bring some of her own evidence. So we could like listen to her EVPs, which is where you record things and get ghost voices. Uh, live in the, in the Zoom, and you can ask any questions because you will be able to participate. You can actually ask the questions that you have if you want to know more about it, if you want to know what kind of gear she uses, if you want to know what are some tips and tricks to deal with a haunting or things that you have questions about because you like to write things like this and you've always wondered how to make something seem more realistic. It, I'm really excited about this webinar. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm actually slightly scared of our like special rewards because I'm afraid that we're actually going to end up haunting ourselves. But you know, that's a risk I'm willing to take in order to fund this book. <laughs> just carry some salt. So you just like toss it around everywhere. You'd be okay. <laughs> So um, I guess the next thing is like anything beyond the Kickstarter that you guys want to talk about that the like projects that are upcoming or what's in the what's in the works. Can you even with everything that you're doing for this, can you even think about the next project yet? I mean, it's it, it looks amazing and there's so much going on. I mean, for me, it's not so much the next project as the current ongoing project. I had a Kickstarter in May that successfully funded for um, an anthology of uplifting science fiction and fantasy stories, which is the polar opposite in tone of this project uh, called Worlds of Possibility. If you look at my website, there's a whole Worlds of Possibility section and you can read some of the pieces, but that's coming out in ebook and paper or hardback format and it's gonna have full color printing. So that's what I'm working on at the same time as I'm working on this. And those are my two sort of like in tandem projects. I'm really enjoying both of them. If I get too creeped out with the ghosts, I can kind of go over into the shiny fluffy place. Uh, and then when I'm ready, I can come back and get super creeped out again because for instance, Joe can super creep you out with his story. <laughs> <laughs> I think that means you're doing it right, Joe. <laughs> So who, anyone else, like, what do you, do you have projects that you can talk about? I know sometimes you can't talk about things right away. So Joe, why don't uh, you tell, oh, yeah. sorry. I was no, going to say, was Joe, saying. Joe, why don't you tell everybody about yeah. uh, your, your chat book that you have out right now? You're Ooh, muted. I think you're muted. Yeah, I was just figuring out if I had one that I could put it on camera. Yeah, this is a, a limited edition. Like I only had like 200 made. It's a chat book, a novelette called The Shipwreck of the Cerberus. 
and I have about have about 50 or 60 left out of the run of 200. You can um, you can just get them from me directly. Um, there's uh, instructions on my website. The other exciting thing that I just got to announce today is um, being in a anthology from Cemetery Dance, which is a publisher that I'm like, what, me? You know, it's kind of like, huh, how about that? Um, uh -huh. The anthology is called Dread and the, the table of contents has like authors I have read and admire and I'm just really excited to be able to announce it. Um, that project and I think I already mentioned I'll have another collection coming out and hopefully that'll be announced soon and we'll get pre-orders going and all that fun stuff but for now I, I I just have to be very vague I can't really say much it's been like really great being a part of um, this anthology um, just like a dream to work with y'all I appreciate it a lot well, we're so we're so happy that you're sharing our story with us. Um, it's it's really really good. Um, so I can't wait for folks to pick it up and get their minds um, and potentially bodies um, blown apart by this story. Um, hmm. the one thing that um, I'll say is just that I'm working on a on a novel. Um, it is also a haunted house story. So apparently, I just have haunted houses on the brain. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe you know eventually I will stop writing about haunted houses, but 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 not this year. <laughs> not oh my gosh! Well, thank you everyone for hanging out. I am. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna call it good because we're like pretty close to the hour. I feel like our like internal rhythm like within the group has been like sort of magical. So I'm like, oh, let's like not push the issue. So thank you everyone for coming. Everyone go out and support this project. Um, enjoy all those amazing perks. And um, good luck with the project, you guys. Thank you again for coming. Thank you. Thank you so thank much you for so having much. us. Hosting. <laughs>